Hi everyone, Susan from Butts Bees, and today I wanted to talk about storing your comb and how to keep wax moth out of it. Wax moth here in the south is really big, but it's not only the wax moth that we would have to worry about here in the south, and it's hive beetle. And I harp on hive beetle a lot, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about how I store some of the frames. Drawn comb can be a lifesaver in so many situations. It's a, it's a, uh, it's like gold, but how do we store it? So when we start taking down some of the hives, getting them ready for fall, you can extract your honey and then store your comb. There's two ways of storing which one is called wet and one is called dry when i store my comb it is called dry and that means there is no honey in it i take all my wets and i set them out on another hive i don't put them out in the open i don't open feed this uh, wet frames back i put them on a hive i let them clean them out and then when they're done being cleaned and they're dry again dry of any honey i put them somewhere to be stored. The wet method is actually taking the frames of honey and stacking them, whether it's with paper between some sort of solid, every like every other uh, super, and you store that honey in a barn, in a cool area. If you're in the north, and I mean north where it gets cold, you can do this. If you're in an area where you don't get hive beetle, you may be able to do this. In my area, at one, I don't get cold. This is a cool day. It's 67 and overcast. I have maybe a week or two of cold. In three days, wet storage with not being in a freezer, like I'm not made of money. I don't have a walk-in freezer to do this. My wets would then become just a slime mold, uh, just a absolute mess. Nothing would be useful to me. So I, cho I have to do dry storage. If you do have access to walk-in freezers and you're still in the hive beetle area, you can store those in a freezer, but barring all that, you know, storage in beekeeping is at a, at a premium. When you take the, the wax moth wants not just the old dark comb. When the old dark comb is not there or they're finished with it, they move on to the lighter and lighter comb. You, your honey will get spoiled or eaten or what have you. They move on. These wax moths have the ability to even digest plastic. And from what I understand, there's even some st studies of, you know, using them to fight some pollution, some plastic pollution. However, for us, they're still considered a pest. So what do you want to do? In, in the southern tier where winters are mild, wax moths not only will love this, but they love the dark areas. So what you want to do is be able to put them in an area where the sun can get to. When I store my frames, I try to make sure that when they're outside, the hives are on end and the sun and air flow can get right through the frames. It's imperative that they get more sun than even you think, because I even have a shade tree where I have a lot of storage for, you know, boxes in flux. But if it's going to be there a while, I move it to where it's definitely more sun 
or try to move it out from any deep shade. Do they still get a little wax moth damage? Probably so. But not like if it was just in a, in a closed environment. When you open up and all of your frames are decimated and you end up with very small amounts of usable comb, you just might as well cut that out and don't make the bees try to restructure anything. So this is where, how I store my boxes upright. And I always try to make sure that there's a good space of six to 10 inches in between boxes. Never push them up close. And then uh, if you have to stack, stack in the opposite direction. Some people actually take the frames out and make a frame holder so that there's no box enclosure for them. And that's fine too. Anything to get the sun on them, to get the uh, air flow between them so that the wax moth doesn't have its dark little cave to eat away at that wax. Now, wax moth in itself, I find not as uh, much of a pest because they're really like the mushroom in the beekeeping world. They come, they eat up all that extra comb because if you've ever tried to compost beeswax it really takes a long time these are natural composters of beeswax and yes it eats up our wonderful worker comb but it also you know pushes us to rotate out that old comb it's not that big a deal but it if you have a weak hive and they come in, then they're going to make the weak hive abscond or just push them right out. So we try to, you know, work within the parameters of nature to not let her have, not let the wax moth have too much to eat, but also, you know, relax about a little bit of wax moth damage. So this is how it's straight up and down. It's on end and the sun can get in there. This is a group of boxes where they're all on end. They're staggered. They're staggered. There's gaps between. That one's a little close, but there's more sun over here. And those frames tend to be just fine. I have light wax in some of them. Some of them have light wax. Oh, you can see that that's light wax. There's dark wax. And I don't have the hive beetle problem. If anything, I have a problem. I think it's due to humidity. And that's that some of times. See, it's been used for brood. And sometimes I have wax that shrinks up, which I think must be a humidity problem. That's been there for a little while. Here's a much darker comb. Still got a little pollen in there. Come on, focus. That's very dark and I don't have the hive beetle, or I don't have the wax moth. If I was to store wet, forget it. That hive beetle would kill, it, it, it wouldn't even be worth my time. Now, one of the things is if you have it, I have lizards, you could have skunks, you could have anything that wants to get in here, but ten, it tends to be that, and I speak of my area, I know if I was in Maine, the mice would probably make a lovely home. If they're stacked one on top of the other, the mice will make a home. If they're stacked like this, I don't have any problems with mice. If anything, I get a couple of lizards and the lizards actually eat other bugs. So I have no problem with lizards. You may get a little bit of wax moth regardless of where you stand it up. So here is a little bit of wax moth, but the bees can clean that up. Now, if it's a big nest of wax moth, 
that whole frame is no good, just toss it. And besides that, when they start getting black like this, it's, you got to start thinking you need to rotate the comb. This will probably have one more season, rotate it out, and you're good. So again, a little bit of wax moth, not that big a deal. Same one right next to it, a little bit, not that big a deal. The sun has to be able to shine through the frames. So that's how I store my comb. You have to understand that in beekeeping, when you start doing this equipment, it's our storage is at a premium. Our drawn comb is at a premium. And, but then we have to deal with these pests. So I hope that I gave you a little insight into how I keep my comb. A beetle is your enemy and the wax moth while the mushroom of the hive, you want to actually kind of beat it back a bit so that you have those wonderful drawn combs to just start pushing those populations. I'm standing in someone's flyway. So I got a really windy day. I hope I was heard. Because everything's at a premium, you've got your spaces at a premium. You've got to worry about mice if you're stacking anything. You've got to worry about your wax moth so that you have some comb to work with in the spring and so that you can have an easier time racing production or making production with that drawn comb. The wax moth, while they're after that black comb, they will start eat, to eat that white comb once they're done. And all drawn comb is a premium. So I hope I helped you, and that's the way that I do things. And until next time, happy beekeeping.